Hey, everybody. This is Dan with Pain Free You. Uh, I'm privileged to have Hardeep from Denmark here, and he's uh, volunteered to share his story with you and the world uh, about his journey with uh, chronic symptoms, mind-body stuff. And uh, Hardeep, thanks for joining me on the call here, and welcome. And tell us what's going on, where you've been, and what where you're at now. First of all, Dan, thank you so much for allowing me to get on on yeah. your uh, program here. And uh, thank you for everything that you've done. You know, I'm sure you've touched thousands of people that you don't even know, and I'm one of those. And so I thank you so much. And I really do believe that you have, uh, s uh, I can say, saved my career, my family life. Uh, wow. uh, you've kept me, I think I was heading for depression, a deep, deep depression. And uh, what you've actually done is you've given me hope. Uh, and I think that was uh, the key for me that I, I just want to thank you for that before I, I tell you a little bit about myself. Yeah. That's wonderful. Thank you, man. Thank you. So uh, I'm, I'm uh, a son of two immigrants that came from India to Denmark, where I live now. And uh, being the child of immigrants, you know, with these immigrant parents, everything was about hard work. You have to achieve. Now we're here. You have to succeed. And unfortunately, I was not able to succeed in uh, their eyes, especially my father. My father was a very, very uh, strict, and he is a strict man, but he's a pleasant guy today, I must say. But when I was a child, it was very, very difficult being his son because my father was not satisfied with the way I lived my life and my accomplishments. Um, it wasn't just by words that he would um, uh, correct, you know, uh, express his... Uh, his uh, disappointment, he would also use his hands, his, uh, you know, he would be physical wow. to me. And uh, all my life, I tried to live up to these expectations. And also being an immigrant living here in Denmark has been quite difficult because also society tells you you're not good enough. You're a second rank. Uh, you know, I have to be honest, I never read a, a positive story about a guy who looked like me. So I never felt that I was able to accomplish. And then school, you know, I was not doing good in school. I got very low grades. I was told when I left high school that I would not be eligible for college and university. And you know that when you are not good in school, that the quiet story is always, uh, if you don't make it here, you won't make it in life. If you're not good in school, how are you gonna do make it in life? And that was all, that was the pressure that came on me. I, I had to live up to expectations. And um, being the, the person I am, I, I needed that uh, acknowledgement. I needed it so bad because my self-worth was um, affected by if I was a success or not, if I was a failure. If I was a, if I was a success in society, I was worth a lot. If I was a failure in society, I was worth nothing. And also in my father's eyes, I had to get that acknowledgement. So mm -hmm. I decided that I was going to become somebody. I was going to achieve something in life. And I wanted to set the bar very high because coming from the bottom, I felt I have to go big if I have to be worth anything. Okay. So I told myself that I wanted to become a, you ready for this one, Dan? I wanted to become a rapper, a professional rap musician and my parents came from India, so I I told myself if if they if I'm gonna get my parents and my father's acknowledgement, I gotta become a rapper in India. So it ended up with 12 years of dedication where I would work on this craft every day, and it ended up uh, in 2008 after 12 years of hard work and dedication, I actually. Uh, became the first rapper in the world who got a record deal in India. And I got record deals in 13 different countries. Oh, wow. Uh, yes. And, and, and I, my album that I released with my band, I see the instruments in the back. It actually made it to the number one spot in India. There's 1.3 billion people in India. And I was the first rapper who made it to the number one spot in this country. Wow. And I said, finally, I'm here. I dedicated my life. I dedicated everything to make this become a reality. And it did become a reality. But the flip side of the story was that I was cheated off all the money. Every penny. I received no money and um, I couldn't even. Should. I was hoping that with this success, 
that I would be able to go back to my parents and say, I have the money. I'm born in a very small apartment. We only had two rooms. I never had my own room as a child. So I was going to go back to my father, look him in the eyes and say, you see, dad, I did it. Here's the money. Buy a house. It's on me. But I couldn't even pay my own, uh, pay my own rent. And while I'm number one in India on the charts and my family members from India are calling my parents after every day, telling them that I'm on national TV in India. Mm -hmm. I have no money in my pocket. I'm working a job that I can't stand. I was in customer service, picking up calls from angry people while I'm number one in India with record deals in 13 countries. And what happened? It went down. I became so depressed. I went into this dark hole. I said, I fought my whole life to become something. And the only way that I could, my father would say that I had become something was if I had success and had money. Yeah. I didn't have, and I had nothing. I had no money. I couldn't even pay my own rent. So with that came stress, depression, um, negative thinking. And what happened was that this was the first experience of how the body can react to pressure in the mind. And three times I was put in the hospital because I had uh, a bleeding ulcer. They put cameras in my stomach. Uh, it's called uh, esophagus hernia. Uh, is that like yeah. I'm pronouncing it right? So, so, so they they saw that I had blood in my um, esophagus and in the stomach, and the muscle didn't work in the you know in the connection between the esophagus sure, and the, the hiatal. Stomach. Yes, yeah. exactly. And I was only in my twenties, so. I'm so happy that the doctor who was a very a good doctor, he said, Hardeep, this comes from stress. What you have, you're so young, you're fit, you're in good condition. This is stress. What have you been through? And this is where it started with me. Sure. And, wow. and then I was in this deep depression for three years. And I just want to say that all through my youth, I have always had some stomach uh, problem issues, sensitive stomach, you know, going to the bathroom, quit, you know, all this stuff. Um, I could go out and stuff, but on certain periods of my life, I have had uh, issues with my stomach. And, um, and uh, so, so, so that was a part of it uh, because of the mental uh, challenges that I had. So um, for three years, I was depressed. And I was in this job I couldn't stand. And I, I told myself, if I have to live this life, I need to have a vision. I need something in life that can that will help me pick myself back up. Right. And being who I am, once again, I set the bar high. <laughs> I said, I'm going to inspire the youth in this country because I saw young people who were so frustrated, just like me, not respected, not uh, successful, not getting recognition from their families or school or society. And I said, I'm going to commit my life to inspiring these young people. But also being ambitious, I said, I'm also going to try to become a motivational speaker. I had never heard about being a motivational speaker, right. but I saw a clip with an American speaker named Les Brown. And I yeah, saw a yes. yeah. I, uh, okay, I saw a short clip with him and I said, I'm going to do that and I'm going to take it to the top. So I, I, I did the same. Uh, I, I uh, decided to live the same lifestyle, the same commitment, the same daily disciplines and, and, and focus that I did when I was a musician. And 10 years later, I'm now today uh, traveling all over. I've spoken to American companies, Capital One Bank, Halliburton, Aka BP. I, I've spoken to a lot of big companies in the world, but Here's the thing. In the process of this journey where I am now, in 2006, 17, uh, my daughter was born. And at that time, when she was born, my career was going upwards. More and more customers, bigger and bigger clients, more and more expectations. You know, they expected more uh, from me. Now I had a, a name, so now they expected the best of the best. I had to live up to expectations again. This is the uh, story of my life. Then I wanted to live up to the expectations of my wife's family. We come from two different faiths. I'm a Sikh. She's a Christian. It doesn't matter what you believe, but uh, in my opinion, we're all one. We're all connected. But uh, 
we come from very strong cultural families and we tried so hard to live up to their expectations. And my wife uh, is, I'm quite fast at expressing my thoughts and she needs some more time to express her opinion uh, to her family. So with I had to implement patience in my life, which I've never been good at because I'm a go-getter, I'm gonna do it now and she needs time and that created stress. And then of course, uh, having a small baby that doesn't sleep at night became extremely stressful. So no sleep and at the same time, my wife was studying to become a nurse. Okay. And, and when those early days um, and I, uh, I, I became, I, I started feeling some pain in my throat. Okay. Slowly. I thought I had a cold. I thought there was some virus or something, or it just started slowly. And I, I don't know if you've heard of TED Talks, but I've given a yeah. TED Talk, uh, you, you know, and yeah, and, well aware. yeah, okay. So in that time, I think you should do a TED Talk. Actually, I've thought about it many times that you should, but I'll we can talk about that afterwards. We can talk about that offline if you know how to get me in on one. I, yeah. I'd love to. I'll see who I can uh, get a hold of, but love to. but yeah. yeah, but you would help so many people. But just to say that that was also pressure because here comes a TED speak, you know, TED talk. I have to deliver, and if you see that speak, this is the time when it started. I'm having this. I'm not sleeping at night. I want to live up to everybody's expectations, and this pain just starts increasing, 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 mm -hmm. and day by day, it becomes so bad that I'm not capable of talking. So I talk and I speak to people with pain. And as soon as I'm done with the speak, I don't want to call anybody. I tell my wife, I can't talk. I come home. I can't talk with the children. I, I do my best to talk with them, but I'm, I, you know, I'm constantly doing this with my hands all the time. I can't, not now. Don't talk to me. Just wait. And I'm trying to explain what's going on because every word that comes out of my mouth is connected to a pain. I'm not talking about a movement. I'm not talking about, uh, I'm talking about words would create pain. And I became so sad. Why is this going on with me? Why is this happening to me? I'm, I'm accelerating in my career. This is not just a job. It's my passion. I love what I'm doing, but I have these expectations all over. I got to live up and I got to be a good father and I want to be a good husband and you know all that. And I'm just, why is this happening? So I can, I, I contact a doctor who's a, you call it Denmark, you call it a uh, ear, nose and throat doctor. Yeah. We have the yeah. same. Okay. So, okay. So they look, he looks at me, he said, there's nothing. I said, okay. It can't be. I, I get a hold of another one. Uh, but, you know, there's nothing but maybe we send you to a voice coach because the way you might be talking is not good. So I go to the voice coach, cost me a lot of money, but there's no change. So I start getting massages, uh, my, you know, the, the treat specialist, mm -hmm. throat specialist, you know, I'm spending within a year in U.S. dollars, six, seven thousand dollars on just going to, uh, I know you have a different system there, but here, uh, you know, getting treatment outside of the system, you have to to pay. So right. I'm, I just, you know, I paid all this money just for getting touched on my throat and it helped for one day, but on the second day, pain is back. And um, then what happens is that uh, I speak to a third doctor. Now this doctor is extremely careful. He's very uh, focused. He wants to find the solution. So Dan, here ha what happens is that he finds a, a very, he sends me to an MR scan because mm -hmm. he believes I might have some issues in the bone structure in the throat. And what happens is that this, this is interesting. They do find something called Eagle syndrome. Have you heard about Eagle syndrome? I have not, but there's tens of thousands of medical syndromes. Yeah, exactly. And they tell me less than 1% of society here has this issue. And what they say is that there are two bones in the throat and it can grow. It can grow. So mine had grown. They could see it, that it was longer than the other one. So now time for surgery. 
I get a hold of the number one throat surgeon in the country. Mm -hmm. I'm put in the hospital. They go in the mouth, open the throat, you know, cut it open, and they want to cut the bone. They, they need to cut it away. But when they get in there, they're not able to cut it away because there's a, way, a blood vein, uh, you know, a blood a vessel. vein. A vessel, yeah. And if they cut that, then I, of course I could die. So he closes it up and he says, I'm not doing it because it's too risky. But he said, Hardeep, listen to me. That thing has nothing to do with your pain. It is, it is placed correct. It's laying there as it should. If it was turning in a direction, hitting something, sure. then we could say, this is it. But the pain was also moving. It would not just be here, be here. Some, you know, it would be different types of pain in the throat. Yes. But he said, it is not what's giving you the pain. I said, oh my God, it's, I don't know. I got to quit everything now. I, I have, I was, I was thinking, how can I live life? How can I, I can't even speak to my children. I can't talk. I can't. I didn't go to for two years. I didn't see anybody. I just went to speak on stage and stayed at home. And I would only speak to my children and my wife because I, I then I had to sacrifice the pain. But I was in my head saying, I'm going to quit everything. I, I, I just can't. I'm not going to do anything to myself. But I understand if people get there where they think there's I can't live no more. But right. I would say I was extremely close to a deep, deep, deep depression. I wanted to get away from everything. And then God blessed me, the universe blessed me with you. And it happened through my brother, my brother, back pain, just like you. He started having pain. He was a basketball player, quite good basketball player. He had knee surgery. And from knee surgery, the doctor said, your knee is fine. The day I went with my brother to the doctor the day he was told that they are absolutely convinced that his knee is perfect shape now. It's, it's as it should be. The day after he got that message, his back started hurting. <laughs> the day after. Right. So my brother, you know, he, he couldn't walk from here to, you know, 10 feet, 20 feet without pain. And, and he just started, he found you and, and Alan Gordon, some video, but we started studying, especially you because, um, you had this simple way of expressing things and you're just, let's get to the point. Uh, you know, I, I, I've, I have a great relationship with my father today. I have forgiven him, forgiven him because uh, I know why he did what he did. And he didn't know any better. He didn't know. He came from sure. that. So he was not able to break that uh, circle, you know, of, 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 of the way you do it. And um I'm forgiving him and we have a great relationship today. So I know now that I react and I respond a lot that has to is connected to my childhood, but mm -hmm. I like the way that you do it. I like the way you, you, you explain things. And you, and, and when I, when I started studying your videos and looking at them and my brother would always text me, send me a, a you know, a YouTube right. video and I would, I'm very disciplined. And, you know, one thing about being ambitious is you learn certain qualities. It's not always good to be, oh, I got to get this, get this. But there's certain qualities that you can implement in improving your situation. Sure. So when you said you need, I, I understood it as I am not connected to, uh, I am not my brain. I am not, I, I can, I can uh uh, differentiate myself. I can I can move myself away from my brain. I need to have some conversations with my mind. Mm -hmm. So what I would do after I saw your videos, I said, you know what? And I'm I, I remember this like it was yesterday. I'm standing in the kitchen. My brother sends me a video of you, and I show it to my wife. And my wife is that's what you got. And she's a nurse, and she's telling me, do you know how many patients that we give medicine where there's no medicine in the pill? It's just performer. It's just, yeah, you know, placebo. We, yeah. And we see them change. We see them improve because they think there's something in that pill. She said, this is hundred percent. You got to start following this guy, Dan, watch his videos. And I would every morning get up at five o'clock and I'm very fortunate to live like you do in close to nature. So sure. I would go to the, uh, to the ocean front and I would conversate with my brain. I would say I'm safe. Not only I'm safe, I said, I'm strong. I can handle this brain. I don't want you to panic. I'm going to go speak tomorrow. And I'm going to go, when I get home, I'm going to talk all day. 
and you're going to try to stop me because you're afraid. But I want you to know there's you. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with me. I'm okay. I was, you know, and I did that. And and you know, the way of I think my 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 way of expressing my thoughts is a lot like you. It's a simple way, and it works. And if you implement what you teach. And you, you do it with this day, we call it in India, we call it sadhana. Sadhana means daily discipline. Okay. So, yeah, so sadhana is what I was doing with your teachings, that I'm going to speak to my mind every day. And I don't remember how long it, you know, what, how long it took for me to become better. It took some time, but I understand, as I told you, I've, I've achieved certain things. So I know things, result takes time sometimes, you know. Yeah. So I said, okay, for me, it's going to take a certain amount of time. And then I remember that I'm driving in, in the car on the highway. And I, I said, I haven't had pain for a week. <laughs> I've had no pain. What's I've had no pain at all in my throat for a week. And then it came back, you know, then my mind said, oh, 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 hold up, hold up. And, you know, and it was, and it was playing games with me, but I started to believe in this system. Like, I, I, oh, let me first say this. I believed in it from day one because I knew that if I didn't, I wouldn't succeed. So right. that's why all treatment, I quit all treatment. No doctors. I didn't even talk to a doctor. But I, 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 I quit the treatment. I, I didn't. I said no. And people offered me free help. Right. I had a, a chiropractor. He's a you're pretty famous guy here. I said, no, I don't want it. Because if I go to you, I'm going to tell my brain that there's something wrong. Sure. I'm not doing nothing. <laughs> and I told my brother, I said, you got to walk. I told my brother, you walk. Start walking. Go to the gym. Work out. Lift heavy. Go what you do. I mean, I talked to him like, you know, I said, this is the only way we're going to fix this thing is if we start telling our brain that there's nothing wrong. And the best way to do it is by doing the things it's trying to stop us from doing. You know, if it didn't want me to talk. I'm going to talk. So I, I talk with so much pain, but pain's not going to stop me. I, I, I had on my whiteboard, I had a, I have a small office. And after I saw a video of yours, I said, uh, if, if, if I, if, if I overcome the fear, the pain will disappear, mm -hmm. you know? And I just knew it, this is fear based. We all live with fear. All of us do. We even when we feel secure, we're afraid of losing that security, sense of security. So just accept it, but don't allow it to control me. And right. I would talk and I would talk and I would talk and I would give lectures and I would be, I would turn it up on <laughs> purpose. I would, I wanted it to hurt. And then I was going to tell my brain, my mind, see, I'm still here. Right. And Nothing bad happened. Nothing bad happened. So then from having pain seven days a week for two years, it improved. And this is still new to me that I'm here. Um, and now maybe I'll say once a month. Maybe, maybe. And that's a success story. Maybe it's once every, so I, I, sometimes I can't remember when it was. Right. I can't, but sometimes it comes back and. Um, for how long? The, huh? For how long does it come back? Now, half a day, one hour, 30 minutes, 10 yeah. minutes. You know what? But I'll start talking. You'll start talking and you'll tell uh, yourself there's nothing wrong. All, yeah. All, yes, I right. do. It. You don't give it the fear or the attention. It can go away quickly. The fact yeah. that it comes back once in a while for a little bit yeah. doesn't mean anything. It just yeah. means brain's like uh, perceived danger somewhere and how you respond to it with no fear, no attention, not a big deal. I'm going to keep doing what I'm going to do and, and continue to speak. That's why you're getting the results and having to go away quickly. Yes. So that's a huge I wanted, lesson. I wanted to ask you something, Dan, because something very, uh, it, when, when we uh, text each other on Instagram mm -hmm. uh, and you said, would you like to be on my uh, program? It came back. <laughs> and you know what? I started laughing. Good. I Best started response. laughing. I said, you trying to joke. You trying to, what are you trying to do? I'm, I'm like, are, are you serious? And I didn't get depressed. I didn't get sad. I started laughing. And even today I felt it and I was laughing because yeah. I knew something was, you know, and my question to you, as I think it would help a lot of people, 
why do you think what is that is it because i'm not there i know i'm not there yet but i'm much better than i was five months ago but what do you think if you look at that situation what, what happened with me what or with my mind what, what do you think is going on well first of all it's not conscious it's not i had the wrong thought so it came back you know a lot of a lot of what goes on is happening by the subconscious brain mm -hmm. So it sounds like from your story, uh, from a very young age, there's a lot of um, emotional response to pressure. Yes. Pressure, 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 perform, pressure, perform. Um, and so, yeah, I'll, I'll get out here and I'll do my success story. Now, you're a guy who's done a TED Talk and speaks all over the world. You speak in front of thousands of people. But yet there's a little bit of pressure to go, I, I got to talk about a subject that I normally don't talk about, which is this stuff. So a little bit of pressure, your subconscious brain was like, whoa, what are you doing? That's it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be more complicated than that. Mm -hmm. Somehow your brain perceived some danger and the way you responded by kind of laughing. The one thing I want to point out, you said, oh, it's messing with me. It's trying to stop me. Your brain's your best friend. It's trying to keep you safe. And if it views potential or perceived danger, symptoms can kind of come back. It's how we respond to them, which is what you've learned to do by speaking more, turning it up and kind of laughing and not being bothered by it. You're not feeding it any fuel. Fear and attention is the fuel. You laugh at it. You keep talking. You focus back on your kids. You focus on what am I going to say tomorrow at that speech, right? Right. And so your response to it is perfect. The fact that it still happens a little bit doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. You're not. It just means that the brain is still in the habit of using these symptoms or sensations as a warning signal to go, whoa, Hardy, something bad's, what are you doing? What are you thinking about? Mm -hmm. And so it just means it hasn't really been 100% bought by the subconscious brain yet. Mm -hmm. But you're like most of the way there so what you're saying is i uh, thank you so much so what you're telling me is that if i continue on this path dealing mm -hmm. with it as i am then mm -hmm. there's a light at the you know oh, i'm for gonna, sure yeah yeah and okay. guess what just based on what you've told me the fact that it might you know come back for a very short window every yeah. several weeks or yeah. a month or so um you're already out of the tunnel man okay yes yeah it's you know you've already done an exceptional job of number one ascertaining that this is what is going on this mind body stuff is the only reason you've even had a medical doctor open up your throat and come back and tell you this is not the cause right mm -hmm. so you've gone to extremes to prove that your body's okay you're young you're fit you're healthy right you've been using your voice your entire life um you know yeah between rapping and speaking, yeah. that is your thing. Um, so you've done an exceptional job of accepting that this is what's going on. Because without that foundational knowledge of what it is mm -hmm. and that that applies to me, doesn't matter what you say to yourself or how you act. If you don't believe that this is what's going on, if you still think there's a medical problem, your subconscious is not going to let go of this protection strategy called pain if the foundation has not been laid with accurate knowledge, acceptance that that's the only thing happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you laid the foundation and then you did that daily practice mm -hmm. in order to, with repetition, yes. teach the brain, mm -hmm. teach the subconscious, because you had the intellectual knowledge, but that repetition is what allowed the subconscious to go, wow, maybe he is okay. Let's turn the volume down on the symptoms. Let's turn it down even more. And you know, repetition is required to learn any yeah. skill. I mean, as a rapper, yeah. you know, year one, you were not nearly as good as you were at year 10. Exactly. Right? True. So it's yeah. repetition, it's practice, it's, you know, and I'm not a rapper, but I've, I've certainly, you know, listened to and watched enough of it. And it's amazing. Yeah. Uh, I think what's really amazing are the guys who can freestyle rap and just say, give me a couple of topics. 
And before you know it, they're yeah. just yeah. off the top of their head because they've That's stuck right. words and, you know, rhythms and rhymes enough that the, some of these mm-hmm. people, you ever see them on YouTube? The guys who are like, he walks yeah, into of course. a I used to I used to do it myself all the time. Back, you're like, give me a topic. Oh, and all of a sudden you're, <laughs> you're like talking to them, making fun of the T-shirt, the backpack, this and that. And you're incorporating right, right. stories that they told. Yeah. yeah. So that's fantastic, man. It, do you want to share any of your work? Are you on like YouTube as far as rapping or speaking? Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, yeah. I, um, uh, my, uh, my, my, my speaks are there. The TED talk is there. So you just have to uh, search my name, Hardeep Dunjal. You know, we were talking about it if I wanted to say, but yeah, uh, it's on YouTube. Uh, it's called actually The Power to Overcome. That's my, that was the title of my my talk. And it actually, it, it's a lot of what I've just told you, the story yeah. of my life and the forgiveness and how to, as I said before, uh, this fear thing, how it either, it can make us grow or it can make us uh, hide you know, fear it can also be your best friend. You know, it, it's sure. it's it's uh, if because it can make you real sharp. A fear of not becoming healthy. Okay, I'm gonna do my best. I'm gonna do everything I can to become healthy again and uh, whatever you know to become sim- symptom free. Um, so so that I've used fear my whole life, and I don't think I can escape it because if you, if you love. You also fear, fear of losing the ones you love. I'm always fearful of my, you know, children, what's going to happen. I worry. This is also a thing about me. I worry a lot. I worry and I have to become better at not worrying. I worry all, you know, too much. So I'm applying a lot of pressure on myself. And sometimes I have to speak to people like you or or other experienced people who can say, I've been there. I relax. Mm -hmm. It's going to be okay. You know? Uh, the what if thought can can really uh, create a lot of uh, stress on, on on the mind, and then you know whatever can happen. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, and I I wanted to ask you another question because I'm so lucky to have you here with me. I, I mean, I'm this is a blessing. But uh, pleasure. I as one thing is my childhood, but then I also chose a. a, a high performance act, uh, work mm-hmm. and i know a few athletes and they always get a small injury right before the game or the fight or the whatever and you know they go to get treatment but i tell them it's the pressure so yeah. it is as you say i'm already out of the tunnel i love what i do but sometimes i ask when it was the worst i said is has it been worth it is it worth it? Even though I'm so happy, I feel so blessed. I feel so fortunate in life that I'm able to live this life and, and do what I do. And I know that I'm touching a lot of people, like young people, especially who are my, you know, I really want to help them. But I've also chosen this path of, oh, I got to perform. And I'm, of course, I'm hoping that you'll say you can do it. And you can, you can, you know, you're already out of the tunnel. Um but didn't I choose a, 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 a line of work that also has uh, increased the possibility of, of having this issue? I mean, or... No, because I've met people who work in a manufacturing plant who have TMS. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And their pressure is showing up for eight hours. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It is not only high performers in very public facing spaces Mm -hmm. that get this mind, body, TMS, perceived danger, pain. It happens to stay at home moms. It happens to, you know, insurance executives who just show up, answer the phone, sell some insurance and go home. Um, So is it worth it? You tell me it does changing lives make it worth Look, what what have you had to pay to become the guy you you are? You've had a couple of years worth of pain, significant pain, depression, all of that stuff. But are you not stronger and more wise and capable now? So hell yeah, it's worth it. Yeah. There's no doubt it's worth it because yeah. you can now carry your your own work, motivating others, inspiring young the youth, helping people get over it. I mean just the topic of your TED talk, the power to overcome. Mm-hmm. You picked that topic. 
right? So you are clearly, so don't second guess yourself and say, well, I don't know, was it worth it? But you're out there inspiring, inspiring. So like, I think you already know it's worth it. Yeah. It's worth everything. Like my 13 years was worth it because it put me on this path. Yes. Yes. Right. And I was just a regular guy working in a computer job and, you know, long commute, stressful job, money problems, young kid. Mm -hmm. I wasn't this hard driving, you know, perfectionist. It was just what happened. So no, I think, you know, at the end of the day, even if this comes back every once in a while, number one, you know exactly what it is. Number two, you know exactly what to do. And number three, because of that goes away pretty quickly. So my encouragement is don't allow that to cause a lot of distress and fear. Yeah. Nothing to fear. It's just your subconscious brain is still relying on the old habitual pattern of pressure, danger means turn on the symptoms. Yeah. But you know what it is. Mm -hmm. And I've heard people like Dr. Schubner, Dr. Hanscom, these are two medical doctors who uh, treat their patients with this mind body um, type of approach. And these guys still get symptoms all the time. Mm -hmm. Right but they know what to do about it. They don't give it any fear. Maybe chuckle a little bit like, Oh, that's kind of silly. But I even got uh, a neck thing that had some radiating pain down the back of my shoulder and arm suck around a few weeks. Actually, Mm -hmm. that was only a couple of months ago, Mm -hmm. but I didn't care. Mm -hmm. I knew what it was. Zero fear, zero attention. You know, if it was uncomfortable, shake my arm out and whatever. Yeah, yeah. But I kind of laughed. I'm like, this will be gone. And yeah, it was. Yeah. And now it's gone and I've been great. Yeah. So the presence of symptoms doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. It doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. You're not emotionally damaged. You're not mentally uh, crazy or anything. Um, your physical body is certainly hasn't changed. No. You know, if you can go from one hour to the next, yeah. here's some symptoms there. Now they're gone. Mm-hmm. Nothing's happening in the body. Yeah. hundred percent the brain. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't judge yourself as not having completed this journey mm-hmm. just because something will come up for a few hours mm-hmm. yeah. or a few minutes. Oh, that's good. I mean that the proof in the pudding is that you look at it and laugh. I just want to make one point though. Yes. Your brain is not out to get you. This is not sabotage. This is not your brain messing with you. This is purely perceived danger. And the only warning signal that the subconscious brain has are bodily symptoms. Mm -hmm. So don't try to view it as an adversarial role that your brain is messing with you. Then that just creates more fear like, oh, no, my brain's out to get me. No, it's not, folks. It's totally not. And you Uh, know Dan, I'm sorry for interrupt you, but it's so now um, I'm just my father's out to get me. Society's out to get me. School's out to get me. My yeah. brain is out to get me. Yeah. So I, I now. Yeah, of course, that's been proven a number of times yeah. because of your experience. And then, you know, I couldn't even imagine, mm. you know, 13 record contracts, number one on the charts and all these scumbags stole your money. Yeah, they did. Right. So yeah, yeah, your true. belief system that says the world's out to get me, look at all I did mm-hmm. and I still got nothing. Mm-hmm. Well, that situation kind of proves, mm-hmm. but what did, what did you learn from that? Yeah. Learn a little bit more about contracts, learn a little bit more about protecting yourself and not trusting everybody with a, you know, a slick sales pitch. Yeah. And I guarantee, and you're speaking now mm-hmm. you're making the deals. Yeah. Yeah, and I have uh, I've teamed up with a amazing manager who says we don't care about how it's not about how much money we make or how much many gigs. As a matter of fact, his mindset is less gig, more time with the family, right. more time at home. Balance, balance. You know, so I've teamed up with a friend who really wants the best for me, and he and the takes best for your audience too. For my audience is exactly, and. Yeah. Uh, I've also thought about, because I just wanted to share this with you also. I'm just giving you everything. That's all but, right. Uh, my, and when we had our firstborn, my wife started having some uh, 
skin issues and mm -hmm. her hands under the feet. And five years later, she still has it. And she's convinced that it's also related to TMS mm -hmm. because they, they've given her every treatment. It's not going away. She's, she doesn't sleep a lot. She's a nurse, as you might know in the States also. They're very under pressure all the time, uh, you know, so, so her skin and she, but the difference between me and her is the way she responds to it. Yeah. I get very attached and emotional about my symptoms. Oh, my, you know, every time I have a stomach, something, it maybe I ate something or my kids gave me some, you know, children. So if I have the smallest issue with my stomach or my throat, I can, oh man, you know, I'm, I'm down and out. And my wife is walking around every day with the hands and feet that are uh, ruined. Her skin is really bad right now for five years. And she doesn't even, she just goes out and lives her life. And she thinks, okay, it's going to go away at some point. But the way I respond to what I'm feeling, the sensations mm -hmm. is different from her abilities or her way of responding to what she's yeah. going through. And I've thought a lot about that too. I said, my wife said, ah, you know, especially when it was bad, she said, you just, you get so depressed about it. I said, the difference is the way we respond to what's going on with us. I, I was response. Yeah, yeah. Your response is your greatest tool. Yeah. Show the brain. I'm not concerned. Yeah. If you go crying in the corner. Oh my God, my stomach, uh, your brain's going, Oh, cat. look at how he's responding. It must be dangerous. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Right. Mm -hmm. So let's touch on the stomach. Yeah. Stress yeah. being in the fight or flight response suppresses digestion. Mm -hmm. It does. So you may have the same thing today that you ate yesterday and today you're stressed out and now all of a sudden you get a little stomach ache or some distress or, you know, mm -hmm. same food. Yeah, yeah, it's true. You, you, the only thing that changed was perhaps the stress level. And again, fight or flight suppresses digestion. Why? Because the fight or flight response is for survival. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Eyes dilate, breathing quickens, heart rate goes up, blood pressure goes up because we're getting the brain, the autonomic nervous system optimizes for one thing and one thing only survival. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it, it shuts down things that it doesn't need to allocate resources to like digestion and even immune system. Mm -hmm. So if you're in a chronic state of fight or flight, your digestion may be chronically suppressed, mm -hmm. which can cause anything from reflux to. Yeah gas, bloating, stomach pain, digestive issues, IBS, you know, diarrhea, constipation, you name it. In my opinion, it's all because we're spending a lot of time stressing out about a stress caused illness. So now imagine if you're stressing out about a stress caused illness, you're pouring gasoline on a fire mm -hmm. and wondering how come it's not going out. Yeah. But my encouragement for you is treat the digestive issues. Yeah like you treated this uh -huh, yeah. is not a big deal. Uh, yeah. Don't start to fear foods and shrink your diet from this to these three things. Okay. Yeah. Because all that's doing is fueling the, the fear, which is fueling the stress response, which is keeping the system suppressed, which means saliva production, digestive enzymes, they're not operating at an optimal level. Uh -huh. Right. Uh -huh. Basically, okay. You now know that you can resolve the stomach issues. Now, I'm not going to say you'll never get a little stomach distress. We yeah. all do. Yeah. I do. Everybody does. Yeah. yeah, It's part of being a human being. But if it's persistent and chronic and severe, you may want to look at this whole mind-body stuff and say, how does that play a role? How do my fears play a role? Am I afraid of foods? Am I afraid of you know beverages, whatever? I am. I'm afraid of beef. Like uh, beef, I, oh, if I have beef two days in a row, uh, I actually told my, and I, I, you know, I'm very blessed. I don't have a stomach problem where I have to go to the back. You know, I, I just in certain times, uh, if I eat beef, as I just said, two days in a row, I'm convinced that I'm going to have issues with my stomach. And every time I eat beef two days in a row, I have issues, you, you know, you and, programmed and like, your I, brain. I, Exactly. You basically, that. yeah. So there's something called predictive coding. Yeah. Predictive coding means 
when you expect something, your brain can literally create it out of thin air. So if you expect to hurt on day two of eating beef, your brain goes, oh, as you requested, here you go. Oh, man. Yeah. So change your expectations. You may very well just change the result. And just as a side note, um, there's a growing community of people who are doing carnivore diets. Yes, yes. Strictly meat, mm -hmm. beef, chicken, pork, mm -hmm. eggs, mm -hmm. right? And many of those people are beef every meal. Yeah. Uh -huh. They're doing well. Yes, yes. So it's not the beef. It's the belief about the beef. Yes. So change your beef belief. <laughs> <laughs> and I've had every test taken. They say uh, your, your stomach's fine. You know, it's a... But, it's yeah. not the beef. It's the belief. Yeah, yeah. Just like the throat. It was never the throat. It was always, I'm a speaker. I've got a sore throat. Uh-oh, what does that mean? Yeah. Fear, fear, fear. Yeah. Now the symptoms get worse. Oh, oh crap. Yes. Within a short period of time, you said it went from very mild mm -hmm. to disabling. Yes, it did. Absolutely. The only thing that created that was the fear and the perception of danger. And if the symptoms stay, what does that mean about my life? Because I am now a speaker. Yeah. Yes. And if I can't speak, uh -huh. I can't earn an income. Exactly. I'm going to fail my father again. I'm yeah. going to fail myself, my wife, and my kids again. So there's a lot of consequences that if you don't get rid of this, you know what I mean? So you see how quickly, even though there, they may have been conscious thoughts, some of it may have been subconscious, you see how quickly the fear snowballed from a mild sore throat to yeah. don't talk to me. I can't talk. Yeah. Leave me alone. Uh, yes, you are a thousand percent correct. A thousand. Even the thoughts that you just mentioned that I had, I had them. These were the thoughts. Yeah. And, and everything you just expressed right there, it's completely my reality. It was what happened. So what did what did you learn from that experience? What happens if you get a new symptom somewhere else? I would say, relax, brain. We're good. I'm it's safe. Chill. Everything's yeah. good. Let, I'm going to go do it right now, actually. Nothing bad's happening. Yeah, yeah. Right? And, yes, correct. And I'm not afraid of uh, going into the pain, like the, the physical pain. I'm not afraid of, for example, if my back was hurting, I would get up and go to the gym. Sure. There's something about me that would, you know, my brother maybe, uh, he, I had to push him a little bit and now he's fine. He's good today. Sometimes he has a little ups and downs. But I told him, walk, go, I'll go with, you know, and, and because I'm, and I think that uh, has been a, a blessing for me that, okay, with all the struggle and pain I had, I actually understood pain. I actually, it wasn't new to me with my childhood. So therefore I was not afraid of the pain. You were just, afraid of what it meant about your future though. Exactly. Yes. And who you were yes. going to disappoint. Yes. Yes. If you were unable to do what you needed yes. to do, yes. which is yes. what? Just more and more pressure. Exactly. And now that your dad's no longer putting that pressure on you, uh -huh. guess who's doing that? Yeah. You're doing yeah. it to yourself. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. That is correct. Right. Now you're pressuring yourself to be, you know, the best yeah. you can be. And look, there's a lot to be said for wanting to be exceptionally good at what you do. When you go on stage, you want to say it the right way so you can reach those people. Um so there's nothing wrong with wanting to be exceptionally good at what you're doing. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. No, no. Don't take these weird sensations that come along terribly serious because as I say to people who are like, Oh, my back hurts. And I'm like, well, did you fall and land on your butt? No. What changed? Yeah. I don't know. It just started hurting. Okay. Then don't worry about it. You know, seems silly, but no. um Anything else you want to share with the audience? Because this oh, has been great, man. It's a lot of lessons you. in here. A little thank bit of coaching you. for you, <laughs> which is great. I, you know what? I, I was not going to let this opportunity. I was not just going to tell my story. I was here to get something from you because this moment for me, from my heart, this is big. And I believe also, and I'm almost getting tears because it, if people who deal with this, they know exactly how much of a burden it is on one's life mm -hmm. and to 
have the opportunity to speak to you and to ask you certain questions and to know that you exist. Man, I you you got all all of us, we want to spread the message that you're giving us. And I I've just I there's so many people that I know where I know you could help them. And I want to spread the word. I want to, you know, I always send people your clips, uh, you know, your YouTube stuff, uh, because man, you I do I I I you know that you're touching a lot of people, but there's another group of people that you're also touching that I don't even think you're right. aware of. Yeah. And this, I just want, this is what I wanted to say that this moment for me right now, it feels like I'm go getting to a new level. I'm getting, I'm becoming, I, I just feel like this, I will, I might still have certain things, whatever, but I'm, I'm, this moment is a moment that I'll always look back at. And it will be like a moment where I, I took myself and my mind to a higher level. And, and um, I just want to thank you for that so much. Oh, listen, man, I appreciate this. This was actually uh, great for me, too, because uh, you're coming at it from a little different angle. Throat pain yeah. is a big deal. Okay. It is a big deal because a lot of people with throat pain go, I don't have back pain, so maybe it's not TMS. I haven't seen a lot of throat pain uh, issues. I felt lonely. I felt so lonely. I, I couldn't find an example. I exactly. I Which is why I'm thrilled. Anymore. Which is why I'm thrilled that you're doing this. Thanks. Thank um, you. You kind of inspiring me to get out there and see if I can figure out how to get on a TED talk. We'll talk offline about that. Yeah. I have a contact here in Denmark. He's a he's a. We'll talk about that, and I'll link you up with him, and then he'll he'll know how. Hopefully, he'll know because you need to get your message out there. And if it's not a TED talk, it's something. Yeah. Keep doing your videos, please, please. No, I'm not stopping. Right. I just in today's video, I said I'm not. I have no plans of stopping. That's good. I, yeah, that's great. That's so, so, yeah. Listen, man, unless you've got anything else, I want to really thank you. This has been a pleasure. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, thank you so much. Wave goodbye to everybody. And uh, we All appreciate the best. you a lot, man. Thank you. Likewise. Thank you so much. Sure. Take care.